So, you've got a Sony APS-C camera, but you're not sure which lens to buy. In this video, I'm going to run through my top lenses for Sony APS-C cameras. First up is the Sigma 16mm f1.4. This wide-angle, autofocus lens has been a staple lens for APS-C cameras for a good while now, and that is for a good reason. 16mm means the focal length is very wide, meaning you'll fit in more of your shot with the camera closer. This is perfect for recording in smaller spaces, such as bedrooms, which are perfect for YouTube videos like this one. 16mm focal length will make your facial features look slightly more exaggerated, but I find as long as you're not sat right up to the lens, it makes your face look very great in vlog-style videos. This lens's low-light performance is extremely good, the f1.4 on the lens refers to the maximum aperture, which essentially is how much light the lens lets in, so f.4 being a low number is very good. For example, for Sony APS-C cameras such as the a6000 or the ZV-E10, it probably came with the 16-50mm to kit lens, which is just as wide angle when fully zoomed out, but has an aperture range of f3.5 to 5.6, which means it will be much darker. The image quality with the Sigma 16mm is excellent, very sharp with very little distortion, which makes it a big step up compared to the kit lens. The autofocus is nice and fast and should always be able to keep up with a moving scene. The autofocus can make a little bit of noise, the motor on it, but in most situations it really isn't noticeable. So the price of the Sigma 16mm isn't that cheap, it's around $370, £340 at the moment. The Sigma 16mm is an amazing wide-angle lens, which I think is the perfect upgrade for people from the kit lens who don't need a zoom range, but want really tack-sharp images, brilliant low-light performance, and cinematic and professional-looking blurry backgrounds. Full reviews and links to buy all of the lenses featured in this video will be in the description. Let's look now at another wide-angle lens, this time from Viltrox, the 13mm f1.4. With its wide aperture again, you can get smooth professional looking out of focus backgrounds, and its wide angle makes it a really solid choice for wide landscape photography, and paired with that wide aperture, you get excellent low-light performance. It is an excellent lens for astrophotography, for example. The image quality is incredibly sharp, especially in the middle of shots, and it is still very sharp at the edges. You will notice vignetting, which is the darkening of the shots around the edges at its widest aperture of f1.4, but depending on your composition, this may be desirable. The autofocus on the Viltrox 13mm performs well, and seeing as it is a third-party lens, it is quick and accurate. And also, the focus motor isn't too loud. A couple of things to note, the Viltrox 13mm has no in-body stabilisation built into the lens, so for video you'll have shakier images relying on the camera's stabilisation. With the ZV E10 for example, it has digital stabilisation built in which you can use to combat this. So who is this lens for? Well if you want a super sharp wide angle lens with autofocus, this is one of the best on the market, even rivalling the Sigma's 16mm which is an excellent lens, the one we just spoke about. The price for the Viltrox is currently around $429 from their official site and Amazon, so clearly not a budget lens, especially in the APS-C space, but for a wide-angle, bright aperture lens with autofocus, you're unlikely to find these specifications any cheaper. So next we're going to look at another Sigma lens, but this time a zoom. 18 to 50 mm f2.8 with a range of 18 to 50 mm and with a constant maximum aperture of f2.8 which is fairly wide not as wide as the 1.4s we've been looking at but still pretty wide this is an autofocus lens but it doesn't have in body stabilization also it is not a power zoom lens meaning the, the zoom can only be controlled by twisting the camera's barrel and not with the in body controls this lens costs around $500, £430, so clearly, again, not the cheapest, but for a zoom range and a wide aperture in an autofocus lens, it is comparable with other lenses on the market. The Sigma 18-50mm f2.8 is a great all-rounder. 
it has a solid zoom range making it suitable for all types of different shots. The wide maximum aperture of f2.8 makes it a great performer in low light and if you want professional out of focus looking backgrounds. The image quality is sharp especially in well lit situations and the fairly wide aperture means that low light photography and video while maybe not looking perfect will be much better performance than you would expect from say the 16 to 50 mm kit lens. The lack of in lens stabilization of course is a shame especially if you're not using a camera with inbuilt stabilization your videos will look shaky when handheld but if you're looking for a flexible zoom lens which is compact and an improvement on the kit lens then the Sigma 18 to 50 mm is the perfect choice. It's a great travel lens, it's small in size, it is just a very good, if you were only going to choose one lens, it is a great choice. Next we'll have a look at the Viltrox 23 mm f1.4 which is a fixed focal length lens. This lens is 23 mm for an APS-C sensor, it has a bright maximum aperture of f1.4 making this a fast lens again which lets in a lot of light. It has autofocus which is a huge plus putting it on par with in terms of specs with the popular Sigma lenses such as the 16mm we looked at before. And the price is currently around $279 from their official site or Amazon which for a wide angle bright aperture lens with autofocus really is a great deal. The aperture of f1.4 gives great professional looking out of focus backgrounds as you would expect and its fairly wide aperture shoots indoor shooting as it performs better under low light. And the image is surprisingly sharp for a lens of this price point. You can see here from this video that I'm making, I'm currently using the Viltrox 23mm, it is a great choice for this type of shot. Overall, the Viltrox 23mm is sharp with a wide aperture with autofocus available for under $300. For that set of specifications it is very well priced and performs well. It is good for shooting video, as I mentioned I've been using it to record this video, so it's a great option for a YouTube lens. So now let's look at something a bit bigger. If you're after a zoom lens then maybe the Sony 18-105mm to f1.4 would be a good option for you. A much longer zoom range than anything we've looked at so far. This flexibility makes it a great all-round lens covering all sorts of different types of shooting. It has autofocus as it, and as it is a Sony lens has optical stabilization built into the lens which is definitely worth bearing in mind. It's good for in-studio videos like this, I used it for quite a long time, though maybe that constant f4 which is a darker aperture than all of the lenses we've looked at so far might make low light situation photography and video just a little grainy. But where it comes into its own of course is that zoom lens great for wildlife and sports photography and the aperture of f4 at 105 millimeters is actually very respectable usually the more zoomed a lens is the darker the aperture will be so it being constant f4 means that that zoom range of 105 f4 is going to be a very good low light performance and the main thing i love about this lens is its sharpness especially when shooting outdoors. It really blew me away when I first got this lens a couple of years ago, making it an excellent choice for portraits if you just want one lens to cover all the zoom ranges that you may want from portrait photography rather than having to swap between, say, three fixed focal length lenses. The price of the 18 to 105 seems to fluctuate around $500 to $600, but it's definitely occasionally available on a deal much cheaper than that, so worth looking out for. But its performance for a video lens is unrivaled, especially if you need good zoom and you're mostly using outdoors. So now let's go even bigger, and that is the Sony 70 to 350 mm f 4.5 to 6.3. This lens has a massive zoom range of 70 to 350 mm making it by far the longest zoom lens in this video and one of the largest zoom range APS-C lenses I think you can even get. This lens is perfect for wildlife and sports as its zoom range is just, you're gonna be able to get way up close to things from a long distance away. It also has optical stabilization built into the lens which is great for when your videos are zoomed in because the further zoomed in you will be, the shakier 
your hand movements will make your shot look. And this lens is a great option for photos or videos. Yes, the aperture range of f4.5 to 6.3 means it is not the best in low light, but that's really not why you should be buying this lens, as it is sharp, with autofocus, and great for outdoor shooting. The minimum zoom range of this lens is 70 millimeters, means it's totally unsuitable for shooting like this video. It'd be zoomed right up my nostril or something, which obviously wouldn't look great. You really need to be careful that this is definitely the right kind of lens for the type of shooting that you're going to be doing. So if you're going to be going to do bird photography or taking photos of a local sports team or something, this is great, but not if you want to be vlogging or anything like that. And of course, as I mentioned, this is a big bulky lens, so it's not very travel friendly, but this is a fairly advanced lens for the APS-C camera space, which translates, unfortunately, to the price. The RRP is surprisingly about $900, though I must stress it is often reduced. I picked up mine new for around $500, so well worth shopping around for if this is the upgrade that you want. I've actually only had this lens for a few weeks, so if you'd like to see a full review coming soon, please subscribe to the channel. And if you're enjoying this one, don't forget to leave a like. So if you need a telephoto zoom lens and you've, well, just been put off by the price of the 70 to 350, then there is a much cheaper route into telephoto photography, and that is the Sony 55 to 210 mm f 4.5 to 6.3. Costing £210 or around $230, the 55-210 to is a cheaper lens, still with a pretty long zoom range. I've been using this lens for around three years, and up until I got the 70-350 to was my main lens for wildlife photography or anything like that where you're further away from your subject, and you need to get that nice zoom in on your subject. It has in-lens stabilisation built in, which steadies your shot, which is very useful for recording video. Of course, the quality is nowhere near as sharp as the 70 to 350 mm. I'm sure you would expect that when you see the comparison in price. The zoom range is much shorter, but as a low cost alternative, it is well worth considering, and that is why I've given it a mention. Well, and here's one little bonus mention, and that is for the trusty old kit lens, the 16 to 50 millimeter Sony kit lens, which most APS-C Sony cameras will have come with. Now, of course, I wouldn't recommend going out and buying this lens, but if it came with your camera, well, just use it, especially if you've got no other lens. I used this lens for about a year before upgrading, and it really helped me realize what I want for an upgrade, where the limitations were, where I was running out of zoom range or it was too dark, and it really made me challenge myself to get the best out of this lens, and it is capable of pretty good shots. So if you're strapped for cash and you've got it, don't feel like you have to upgrade straight away. So these have been my top APS-C lenses for Sony cameras. Are there any that you think I've missed? Let me know in the comments below. But if you've enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to the channel and dropping a like on the video. But until next time, see ya.